In this chapter, we will be solving systems of equations. In this chapter, we'll be solving quadratic quadratic systems. Hi everyone. So in this lesson, we're going to be solving uh, algebraically quadratic quadratic systems of equations. So when we talk about a quadratic quadratic system of equations, really what we're talking about here is we've got two, two parabolas, okay? Um, and so we're going to look at the way the two different parabolas could overlap and we're, again, we're still looking for uh, the point of intersection or the points of intersection, I should say. Because remember, when we say to solve this, we are looking for, okay, we are looking for specifically for those points of intersection. Now, when it comes to the way two parabolas or two, quadra uh, two quadratics can interact with each other, We've got three different possibilities. Well, four really, but the three ones that are that are of interest to us. First of all, it is possible that the two of them don't even intersect. Okay, so there's no points of intersection, no solution. Okay, uh, it is possible that they are tangent to one another. Okay, they they intersect each other at one point. Now, that doesn't have to be the vertex. It is possible that you could have them intersect like this. Right where there's just that one point where they, they both touch each other. But the point being, it is still possible for them to only intersect at, at one point. Or you could have them both intersect each other at, at uh, two different distinct points. And that's usually when you talk about parabolas intersecting, that's usually what your head would go to, uh, systems of equations that work like that. Now, when we solve a system of equations, uh, we can do this the same way that we do with the linear system. We can talk about it in terms of, of substitution or elimination. However, the way this differs from what we did with the linear systems is that typically, and here they explain it in uh, both those methods here, if you're going to use substitution, we're going to isolate the y in both cases. If you're going to do elimination, you're going to eliminate the y. Now, in, in Math 10, when you're dealing with linear systems, you could have chosen either the x variable or the y variable. It really didn't make a difference. That's because the degree on those variables was 1 in all those cases. Here, because the x variable is going to be the one that's squared, okay, the independent variable is the squared one, um, you can't really eliminate the x cleanly uh, because Getting rid of the x might not get rid of the x squared term and vice versa, uh, vice versa there, okay? Um, you, you might be able to solve for x if you were to, to complete the square and isolate the x variable um, and then do a substitution, but that is like needlessly awkward uh, way of doing this. If you just focus on the y variable, it's so much easier to, to get to the solution that you're looking for much, much quicker. Anyway, so the best way to do this is just to go through and do a bunch of examples so you get the sense of, of how you'd go about doing this. But you should notice that it's, it's very similar to what you've done in the past when it comes to solving systems of equations. Okay, everybody. So when we st uh, start this, first uh, question we're going to look at, we're going to do a couple questions here where we're going to solve these things graphically just so that you, you understand how that works as well. Now. Here's equation one, here's equation two. If we're going to do this graphically, then what we got to do here is we got to isolate uh, the variable in both cases here. So in this first equation, I might bring y over to the other side. So I get y is equal to x squared. Now notice, granted, I took the y to the right-hand side, but because they're equal, it, it doesn't matter what size you write that on. It usually looks better to write the y on the, on the left. Equation two, uh, I would do the same thing. I would bring the y over to the right-hand side. But again, because of equality, it doesn't really matter what side it's on. So y is equal to, and I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, so now we're going to solve this system graphically. So I go to the calculator, y equals, and I'll enter in x squared for the first equation. And then the next one is x squared uh, minus 4x plus 4. Yeah, minus 4x plus 4. There we go. Now, I don't know right off the top of my head what that's going to look like here. So uh, when I go to zoom, I'm going to do zoom standard. Takes me back to the, the default settings. There's my x squared. Okay, now there's, there's my, other, my other graph there. Now, when I take a look at those, and actually when I take a look at the equations, notice that the, the leading coefficient in both cases is the same. It's 1 meaning that both of these parabolas 
have the same vertical stretch value here. Now, the reason why that's significant is because, like I see one point of intersection. My question is, are these things going to intersect again somewhere way up here? Like maybe I need to increase, like maybe I go to my window and I increase my Y max. Let's make that 100. Let's, let's see what this thing looks like. There, there we go. There's that first one. There's the second one. It's the exact same parabola, really, just shifted over a little bit. So I suspect that these are going to kind of run, in, in a sense, okay, parallel to each other, and they'll never intersect. So there is just that one point of intersection there. So I'm going to go back to that default zoom settings. Here it comes. Okay, now to get that point of intersection, and I know we've, we've done this before, it's the second trace gets us into this menu right here, the calculate menu. I'm going to choose intersect. And am I on the first curve? Yep. Did it bump over to the second curve? Yep. Uh, is it okay if the calculator makes this as a guest? Well, there was only the one point of intersection, so yeah, that's fine. And I'm getting the point of intersection here is the point one, one. Okay. Now, <clears throat> they aren't tangent to one another. They are simply intersecting at one point. So, okay, bear in mind that this is not, okay, a point of tangency. It sort of looks like a point of tangency, but it's not, okay, because uh, they are passing through each other. Now, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, well, this one is organized a little bit nicer, okay, uh, because I can see what y is equal to in both cases here. So, I'm just going to enter that in. So, I'll go back to my y equals. We'll clear off both equations that are there. I'll just copy that in there. Uh, 3x squared minus 3x minus 8. The next one was, now it's, it's backwards to what I would normally like to write in there, but that's okay. The calculator's doing the work anyway. It's not confusing the calculator that it's, that it's written in that order. It is 2x squared. Um, I do notice that the leading coefficient in both cases is different. This is a positive 3. This is a negative 2. Okay. This one's going to open down. This one's going to open up. Now, let's take a quick look at what the graph looks like. Here's the first one. Okay, there's a second one. Now, you can imagine that there are, well, you can clearly see that there's got to be two points of intersection. Now, this one here might not be perfectly clear to me, so I'm going to press window and I'm going to increase the Y max. And I shouldn't even have to do it all that much. Let's go from 10 to 15. Just take a look at what that looks like. Okay, there's that first parabola. Now, the second one. Okay, I'm a little bit happier with that because I can clearly see the two points of intersection. So, second trace to get into the calc menu, intersect. I'm going to have to do this uh, one function at a time. So I'm going to move over here. Is the calculator, is the cursor on the first curve? Yep. Did it jump to the second curve? Yep. Uh, is it okay if the calculator uses that as a guess? Yeah, it's just going to start with that. And it gets me to that point of intersection, negative 2, 10. So one point of intersection is negative 2, 10. Okay, let's go find the other one. Got to do the whole process again. So second trace, intersect. Now I'm going to move the cursor over here. Am I on the first curve? Yep. Did it jump to the second curve? Yep. Is it okay to guess that? Yep. And my second point of intersection is the point 2, negative 2. Okay. So there you go. Those are our solutions. Uh, I want you to know that when you write the solutions, you need to write them as ordered pairs. Okay, we are finding both an x and a y coordinate. If you don't put the ordered pair in, if you don't put, sorry, if you don't put the parentheses in, then for example, two negative two, I, I don't know what that's referring to. Like I, I really don't. This is not just me playing, playing dumb. If you just gave me this as your solution, is this two different x values? I mean, in this particular case, it, it is actually. It might be, <laughs> might be smarter if I did it like this. And let's talk about that second, that first point there, negative two comma ten. If you don't put parentheses around that, this could be two different x values. Now, that's not true in this problem. That's negative 2, that's 2. So what is that? Well, it's x and the y. Now, how am I supposed to know that those are different unless you put that in the proper notation and put the parentheses around it? Because as soon as you put the parentheses around it, I look at that and say, oh, yeah, x comma y. I get it. Okay? But without those parentheses there, that's not what you're saying. You're just, you're just listing numbers and that's maybe not exactly what you want to be saying. Okay, 
Now, let's keep going here. Solve the following system by using the substitution method. Okay, okay, so we're going to do this one here algebraically. So here's equation one, here's equation two. Now, by doing the substitution method, uh, what I'm going to do first of all is isolate one of those variables. Now, maybe what I do is I take equation one, because when I look at equation one, I, I'm kind of lazy. All I got to do is move one term over to get the y isolated. So equation one, it would look like this. And I will put it in the correct order there. It'll be x squared minus 4x plus 8. Okay? That's equation one here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation one and I'm going to substitute that into equation two. And the way that's going to look here, equation two is y minus 2x squared plus 3x equals 2. But I now know that y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 8. Okay? Or at least, okay, those are the coordinates of, of, the, of the point of intersection. Maybe it might help if you looked at it like this. So you've got uh, two different parabolas here, okay, doing something like this. Any point on, let's say, this first parabola, let's say that this is that, this, this is number one right here, this is parabola number one. Every point on this parabola would have coordinates x comma y. Okay? But just to say x comma y, that's not specific enough. I mean, if you just give me the coordinates x comma y, I don't know that you actually mean for that to be on this parabola. I mean, that could be anywhere. x comma y is over here, here, here. I mean, that could be anywhere. To indicate that I need this to be a little bit more specific, what I would do is instead of saying x comma y, I would say x comma, there's my y, that's the y that I want. x squared minus 4x plus 8. Now I know that looks awkward and for some people it might be a little intimidating, but bear in mind that that's what y is. I took the first equation, isolated the y. So once you know what x is, this is what you do to get the y coordinate. So if you knew, for example, that x was 1, to get the y you would square the 1 minus 4 times the 1 then and add 8. So that, that's, a, that's a fairly good representation of every point on that parabola. So that's every point on, on that parabola here. This point of intersection, okay, also has those coordinates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that point and I'm going to plug it into the second equation, okay? Because I'm talking about the x values that I'm working with right here satisfy the first equation. But at this point right here, it also satisfies the second equation. Now, there should only be, uh, well, in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating this. There should only be one x-coordinate that does that. Now, it, there, there might actually be more here. We'll find that out in a second here. But there might be more than one x-coordinate, but there can't be that many x-coordinates that actually satisfy both those equations simultaneously. We're going to see what happens here. So in my second equation, instead of writing y, I'm going to write x squared minus 4x plus 8 minus 2x squared plus 3x equals 2. This is equation 2. y, y minus 2x plus 3x equals 2. And again, I get that y from that first equation. Now, I've got a quadratic equation. I'm going to solve it. So I've got an x squared here, a negative x, 2x squared there, so it's going to be negative x squared. Uh, minus 4x plus 3x will be negative x and then plus 8 equals 2. Uh, it's a quadratic, so I want this to be equal to 0. So I'm going to take all these terms and move them over to the other side of the equation. So 0 will equal positive x squared plus x minus 6. Now I'm going to factor that. Now if factoring doesn't work, I'll use the quadratic formula. Hoping factoring will work. Factors of negative 6 that have a sum of positive, positive 1, well, this is negative. So that means these two signs must be opposite. And then I need, because this is a positive value right here, I need the larger of these two numbers to be the positive one. So factors of 6 are 2 and 3. It's got to be 2 and 3. So therefore, x is going to equal positive 2, or x will equal negative 3. OK, good. So those are my two, the two x coordinates of my points uh, of intersection. Wonderful. So there are two points of intersection. Now, let's check and see. Uh, what the y coordinate should be. Now, I'm, I'm pretty lazy, like I told you before. I've now got an equation up here for solving for y. 
Well, I'm just going to take those two x coordinates one at a time and plug them into here. Now, it shouldn't matter which equation I use. So, why not use the one that I've already got y isolated for? So, if that's the case, I'm going to get the point if I plug 2 in. 2 squared is 4. Okay, minus 2 times, sorry, negative 4 times 2 is 8. Ah, sorry, negative 8 plus 8, those cancel. So, I'm only left with that first term, which would be 4. So, the point 2, comma 4. Or, negative 3. If you plug negative 3 in for x, you're going to get 9. And then minus 4 times negative 3, well, it's going to be 12. 9 plus 12 is going to be 21. Okay, uh, plus 8 is going to be 29. And so I've got the two points here, 2 comma 4, negative 3 comma 29. Now, I am going to want to check to see if I did that correctly. So I'm going to take these two points here and I'm going to do my check. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these points in to the second equation. I used the first equation to get the y coordinates. So to see if I did this right, I'm going to use the second equation and plug my points in. So for example, uh, 4 minus 2 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 should equal 2. Now, plugging that first point that I got into the second equation, let's just double check that. Okay. So this will be 4, this will be 6, so together that's 10. This is going to be 8. 10 minus 8 is in fact 2. That works. So my next point here, 29 minus 2 times negative 3 squared plus 3 times negative 3. Does that equal 2? Well, let's check this out. Uh, 3 and negative 3, that's going to be negative 9 and 29, so that's going to be 20. Uh, negative 3 squared is going to be 9. Negative 2 times that's going to be negative 18. 20 minus 8, yes it does, it equals 2. So, okay, both of those points checked out when I plugged it into the other equation and they both work. Perfect. That's substitution. Solving for y and then taking whatever that expression is and substituting it into the other equation. So I solve it in equation 1, plug it into equation 2. Or, or solve it in equation 2, plug it into equation 1, doesn't matter. Now let's take a look at elimination. Let's solve this system by elimination. Now, again, uh, we're going to get rid of the, the y variable. Uh, the reason for that here is because it's highly unlikely that I will be able to get rid of the x variable altogether here because of the square here. Remember, the x squared and the x, those aren't like terms uh, even though they're using the same variable. So you've got to be careful with that. Now, first of all, I want the structure of these things to look the same. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take equation 1, okay? So we're going to kind of rewrite this equation. I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to bring that negative 5 over just so that they're both equal to 0. So negative 4x squared minus y minus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. And there's my second equation. Okay. Yeah, good. At least now everything kind of lines up. x squared, y, x, constant, and then 0. Okay, now I want to get rid of y. Uh, which means I need the coefficients to be the same, so I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to multiply it by 4. Now, notice that in my, my labeling here, you can tell what I'm doing by the way I work with my labels. So I multiplied that label by 4, so I'm going to multiply the equation by 4. It's going to be negative 16x squared minus 4y minus 8x plus 20 is equal to, and then 4 times 0 is still 0. And in equation 2, I still haven't done anything to yet. So 3x squared minus 4y minus 46x minus 37 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, the coefficients are the same on the y coordinates. So now what I'm going to do, and this is a really easy place for, for people to make a mistake here, I need to subtract these two equations. If you were to add those two together, negative 4 plus negative 4 is going to be negative 8. Okay, some of you m might have to just pause for a second and think about what's going on there. Okay, because we know that integers throw people off. Negative 4 minus negative 4 is going to equal 8. So, sorry, negative 4 plus negative 4 is going to equal negative 8. So what I want to do is subtraction. Negative 4 minus negative 4, that's going to change that second term into an addition. Negative 4 plus 4, there's where my, my 0 comes from. That's how I get rid of the y here. 
But let's just do this. Negative 16 minus 3, negative 19x squared. I already know that the y terms are going to cancel. I did that on purpose. Negative 8 minus negative 46 is negative 8 plus 46. Okay, so it's going to be positive 36x. 20 minus negative 37. It's going to be add 37, so it's going to be 57. Okay, so now what I want to do here is we are going to, uh, to factor this. We're going to try to solve this as best we can here. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll, we'll simplify this expression. Because uh, we're looking at this and we're hoping that we got, can get rid of that 19 up front because it's a little awkward here. So we're going to divide everything through by negative 19. And it turns out, yeah, you can. This becomes positive x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Good. Now, our hope is that we can factor that. It's an x. It's like, well, this is negative, so we know that one of them is going to be negative, one of them is going to be positive when you put those two factors together. Because the sum of the two terms is negative here, we know that the larger one must be negative. So it's got to be negative 3, positive 1. So our two values of x here will be positive 3 and negative 1. Now, although elimination uh, tends to be fairly for, for a lot of people, it's, it's fairly obvious uh, how this works. A lot of people like doing so, uh, elimination because it just makes sense to them. Um, where the work pops in is when you get down to here, now you've got to solve for the, the y coordinate. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, we're going to choose one of these. And let's try that first one. So y is equal to, if I bring over the negative 5, bring the y over, y is equal to negative 4x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now I've got these two x coordinates. I'll plug these things in. Let's figure out what the y is. So 3 squared is 9 times negative 4 will be negative 36. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So negative 36 and negative 6. Oops. Negative 36 and negative 6 will be negative 42. Plus 5 will be negative. Oh, wait a second. First. <laughs> 37. Wow, for a moment there, I, I just completely had a, a, a mind blank on that. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, the other coordinate that we found was negative 1. Okay, and if you plug uh, negative 1 in, negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 1 will be positive 2. So negative 4 plus 2 will be negative 2 plus 5 is 3. All right. Now, we can check and see that that works over here by simply, as we sorry, we use the first equation to get the y coordinate. Now we can double check that it actually works in the second equation. So what I would, what I would do here is I've, I've got my, my equation, I've got my calculator here. So the point that I'm going to check is 3, negative 37. So 3 times 3 squared minus 4 times negative 37 minus 46 times 3 minus 37. Now that should equal 0. And it does. So we know that that first point there works. Now let's try negative 1, 3. Okay. 3 times uh, negative 1 squared minus 4 times 3. Yeah. First, just a second there, I lost track of that. Minus 40, whoops, 46 uh, times negative 1 minus 37. That should also equal 0, and it does. So we've been able to verify that those two points both work. Those are the two solutions to our, our system. Solve using any method, either elimination or substitution. OK. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to show you guys a method here of solving that kind of overlaps these two ideas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for y in both cases. So in equation 1, I will get that y is equal to x squared. I'm just going to bring that 2x over, negative 2x minus 6. Equation 2, y is going to equal 2x squared minus x plus 3. Just bring over those two terms here. Okay. Now, I've sort of got this set up as if I would do a graphical solution. But now what I'm going to do, okay, and I've, and I've lined things up beautifully for elimination even, 
Now what I'm going to do is something that's kind of a crossover. You could either think of it as elimination or think of it as substitution. Uh, I'm going to start with it looking like substitution because this is equal to y and y is also equal to this guy right here. I can write that 2x, sorry, x squared minus 2x minus 6 is equal to 2x squared minus x plus 3. Now, on the face of it, that looks like substitution. I took and substituted this expression for the y in this expression. But now I'm going to move all these terms over and I'm going to subtract all of these terms from these terms just to bring them over so it's equal to zero. So 2x squared minus x squared is x squared. Negative x minus negative 2x will be positive x. Okay, 3 minus negative uh, 6 is going to be plus 9. Okay, now I'm all of a sudden I'm concerned that I'm, I've done that wrong. Okay, hold on. Change the sign, negative 2x. Okay, copy that out there. Subtract, negative, yep. Okay, anyway, so there we go. Now, and that, the reason why I say this looks like substitution, sorry, elimination here is because in elimination, that's essentially what you would do. You would, you would take one expression and subtract the other. So that kind of looks the same there. Now, I got to solve that quadratic. Now, on the face of it, I can't think of factors of 9 that will add to 1. Let's check the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. Let's see what's going on here. So 1 squared minus 4 times a times c. That's going to be 1 minus 36 or negative 37, oh, sorry, negative 35. Wow. Embarrassed I said that. Negative 35. Uh, once again, we get from that that there's no solution. There are no real roots. These two lines don't intersect. Okay, now we'll take a look at a, a couple of word problems. So here we read two projectiles are launched at the same time. The height of the first one is modeled by the function h is equal to negative 5t squared plus 50t minus 50. And the second by h is equal to negative 5t squared plus 100t minus 300, where h is the height above ground in, in meters and t is the time in seconds. Determine uh, and interpret the point of intersection. Okay. okay. Well, we've got two functions here. We've got to find the point of intersection. Now, the nice thing about this is that in both cases here, we've isolated h. So if if h is equal to this function and it's equal to this function, we know that these two functions here, five, negative 5t five squared plus 50t minus 50, we know that that must be equal to negative 5t squared plus 100t minus 300. We know that they must be equal to each other. Okay? Now, once they're set equal to each other, it's actually fairly easy to solve this because the negative 5t squared, negative 5t squared, those two terms will cancel. I can add those to both sides. I can sub, uh, subtract the 50 from both sides, the 50t. So 100t minus 50t put, gets me 50t on this side. I can add that 300 to both sides, and that's going to get me 250 is equal to 50t. And then when I divide, I get that 5 is equal to t. Okay. So in this case here, it was, it was pretty nice to solve, mostly because the quadratic term disappeared. So now I know that five, uh, t is equal to 5. So I can go back up to either one of the original equations. I'll probably go to this one right here just because the, the number is a little bit smaller. Uh, t squared, if t is 5, so t squared so is going to be 25. Okay, Times negative 5 is going to be negative 125. Okay, uh, Plus 50 times 5. And then minus 50. And when I do that, I get 75. Now, just to double check that that actually works, I'm going to plug that into the other uh, the other equation. Here. I'm just going to plug in the negative five, or sorry, the positive five there. So negative five times twenty-five plus one hundred times five minus three hundred, and that does. And I've got it on my calculator over here. That does equal seventy-five. So I know that that point is the point of intersection. Now, what does it mean? Okay. Well, this is my t coordinate. This is my h coordinate. Okay. Uh, so it they intersect. Oh, sorry, actually the projectiles, okay, the projectiles collide at five seconds, okay, that's what that, that's what the five here is telling us, and 75 meters up, that's what the, the H coordinate there is telling us. Okay, good. Let's take a look at the next one here. 
This one says a parabola has a vertex of negative 4, 4, okay, and an x-intercept of negative 6. That's enough for us to, to come up with the equation of that parabola. Okay, just the vertex and a pointer. Now, a second parabola has a vertex of 1, negative 9, and a y-intercept of negative 8. And again, that's enough for us to come up with the equation of that parabola. Find and solve the, uh, the system. Okay, okay, let's take, let's take a look at that first one here. We know that it's got a, a vertex of negative 4, 4. So it's going to be x plus 4 squared plus 4. We know that it's got an x-intercept of negative 6. Now remember what that means. It means it goes to the point negative 6, 0. So 0 is equal to a multiplied by negative 6 plus 4 squared plus 4. Uh, I'm going to bring that 4 over right now because I don't want to make a, a very predictable mistake that, that gets made in terms of uh, when people mess up the order of operations. So I'm going to bring that 4 over. So it'll be negative 4 over here. Uh, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Squared is going to be 4. And when I divide, I get that a is equal to negative 1. So my equation here is y is equal to negative x plus 4 squared plus 4. Now, because I know that I'm going to have to combine, okay, combine these two equations, I'm actually going to expand that out. I'm going to put that in standard form. So that'll be x squared, what do we got here, plus 8x plus 16 plus 4. So negative x squared minus 8x, and this will be negative 16 plus 4, so negative 12. So there's my first my first equation. Now my second equation, I was told had a vertex of 1, negative 9. So it's going to be x minus 1, sorry, a times x minus 1 squared minus 9. And it has a y-intercept of negative 8. So it's going through the, the point here, 0 comma negative 8. All right, so I've got to plug that in. So negative 8 will equal a, 0 minus 1 squared minus 9. And again, because I want to avoid the, the, even the possibility of, of slightly making a, a mistake here with the order of operations, I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So it'll get me 1 is equal to a multiplied by, well, negative 1 squared will be 1. So, yeah, well, okay, a is equal to 1 once again. So y is equal to 1, x minus 1 squared minus 9. And let's expand that out. So y is going to equal x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 9 or y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. All right, here are my two equations. And just like I did in the previous question, because they're both equal to y, I'm going to set them equal to each other. So negative x squared minus 8x minus 12. I'll set that equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. All right, now because I, this one's got a positive x squared term and this one's got a negative one, I'll bring those over to the right-hand side, so that'll be 2x squared. I will add that 8x to both sides to get positive 6x. I will add 12 to both sides to get positive 4. Oh, I'm getting close here. Now, everything here is divisible by 2, so as long as I divide everything by 2, I can simplify this equation. And this is going to reduce down. This is going to be x plus 2, x plus 1, which means my two values for x would be negative 2 and negative 1. Awesome. Now, we'll go back into either one of those two equations to get the y coordinates. Now, I'm probably going to go back up to this one just because it's a little simpler. So let's take that up here. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be 4. Minus 8, okay, so 4 plus 4 minus 8 is going to be 0. Okay, well, that's kind of neat. Now, negative 1, negative 1 squared is going to be 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 will be 2. So this will be 1 plus 2 is 3. Minus 8 will be negative 5. So these are the two solutions that I think I should be getting, but I get the y coordinates from here. Now I'm just going to double check in this first equation just to, just to see if that works here. So let's plug that in. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4, but it'll be negative because of the, ne the other negative that's out front. So it'll be negative 4. Um, if I plug in the negative 2 into that, I will get negative 8 times 2 is going to be uh, 16. But negative 4 plus 16 is going to be 12 minus 12 is 0. So that one works. Now let's try this last one here. Negative 1 squared will be positive 1. That negative makes it negative. 
negative 8 times uh, negative 1 is going to be positive 8. So it's going to be 7 minus 11 will get you negative 5, and there it is. So there's the, there's the solutions to the systems, those two points here, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, negative 5. I hope that makes sense.